let's start right now and if you guys see my name make sure you look at my stream so where is the live button on the right to my name you hit that and you can join my stream okay so today's class we're gonna go to the what are, what is option trading and the basic options so it'll be a beginner's class so the first thing what is option trading so option is different than shares because we don't when you buy an option you're not buying equity for a company you're not buying an ownership or any rights for a company you're buying contracts you're buying a contract that basically you're saying if the stock's going to go up or down so you don't have any equity on the companies pretty much a contract and the main contracts that you can buy it's a call when you think the stock is going to go up in this case it'd be a long call or a put when you think the stock's gonna go down so it's a short put is a short and call is a long all right so you can see here this is called an option chain as you see here and this is on finger swing The concept is pretty much the same on regardless what broker you have. They have different designs, but the concept will always be the same. So this is an option chain. And all these tables here are expiration dates. So you see here the ticker is Apple in this case. And all these dates here is expiration of contracts expire so the further away the expiration the more expensive the contract is that it is and we're gonna go through that in a little bit and I explain you why it's March 17 23 contracts are expensive are more expensive than January 81 so if you're a thing or swim it's simple you go on trade and if you are eligible to trade options you should be able to see this option chain Okay, so saying that, let's say I make an alert, okay? So this is only an example. If you look at the premium chart, can you guys hear the class? Hello? We can hear you. Okay, somebody said insemination in class here. Okay, so for example, I need to type an example on how me and Kian format the alerts. He cuts out a little. Okay, so if you see that that thing that I just seen, so that's a uh, Apple 131 call at 1.9201 expiration. So what do you need to look when you see that? You first you, see, you make sure you're on Apple. Let's take the company name. So Apple.
So Apple is a company. 131 is a strike price. Okay, so the strike price is here. As you see, strike is going to be in the middle. And you can modify how many strikes you want to see. So if you want to get a farther out the money, we're going to go to that tour. I'm going to tell you what's out the money, in the money, not the money. But if you, let's say, you want to get an Apple 2022, so I'm just I do here the January 2022 date, and you're gonna get a 200 call. So you need to see that you don't see it here. That doesn't mean it doesn't exist. You just most likely go here. And now you have more strikes. So now you can see it doesn't go to 200 as right now. So you gotta go to get more here. So let's try 100 strikes. So it looks like it messes out at 185, okay? So, but again, that's that's how you look at at the at the further strikes. You you can or you can also do here 10. And you only have here all these 10. I usually give you on 25 strikes. Can I just if I need more or less, I just switch it real quick. Um, okay, so we were talking about this trend. So as I, as you see here, 131, when it's where it says a strike, that's that's the strike we're looking at. And then the C is simply for call. Uh, let me hold on, give me one second. C is going to be for a call. So mo mostly, a uh, call you're saying is going up. If there will be a P there, that means a put, which, which means it's, we're thinking it's going down. So we're shorting on puts and longing on calls. And they're usually on every app, uh, in different, different that is the, that this is the Meritrade, or if you're on Robin Hood Weevil, usually the calls are to the left and the puts are to the right. And you can always see here, you see, it says calls here and it says puts here. So in this case, since we put a C, that means that's a call. And if I would have put a put a P again, that, that means a put. So the at point 1.92, that's a price that we're paying. So this is very important for you guys. So this is when it starts to get a little more Com not complicated, but you need to understand a little more. So you see 1.90 here and 1.93. So 1.90 is the bid, and the 1.93 is the ask. In this case, since Apple, it's a pretty liquid stock, uh, that means for options, it's a pretty liquid. Well, for both for shares and options, they're both pretty liquid. That means Contracts usually fill real quick, and liquid liquid options have a small spreads. So that the difference between this 1.90 and 1.93, it's it's a, it's called a spread. So if you click here, you're gonna get this uh, here in the bottom. You see. So that's going to be your contract that you're trying to buy. So here, spread single, since we're buying a call, we're not gonna go through margin trace today. That's going to be key as tomorrow. So single is good. Buy is good since we're buying a position. Then the amount of contracts, that's all going to depend on you. Apple, 
January 20th, January 8th, 2021, 131 strike, type call, link, don't worry about link, price 1.93. In this case, you want to do a 1.92. Because that's the price you want to pay. You want to pay a price not at the bid and not at the ash. You want to pay a price in between. So you, you should get fit on that. Order type, limit to buy. Do limit why? If you don't market, you're most likely going to feel at 1.83 or more. So in Apple, it's not that bad because the spread is so small. But if you do that with another stock that let's say we do Snowflake here, I'm switching to Snowflake here. So I just want to so look at the difference here. You see, so now the spreads from the bid. And the S are bigger, right? So that means it's not as liquid. You're going to have to pay a little more. So 6.80 and 7.50. So I would do here, uh, I would do something about 7.20, 7.25. That's the limit that I would put here. Remember, so for example, I would try first 7.20 and see how it goes from there. So remember, you always do somewhere between the bid and the ask. And doesn't mean it's going to fit right away. I get people saying all the time, well, it's not feeling. And I'm like, OK, are, are you looking how this is changing right now? It should always feel, but you, you, it, it also is going to change too. So why do I say do a limit order? If you don't market, it's going to feel at 750 or more. But so what does that mean? that instantly since the spread is because you're not going to be able to sell it to that price so if you sell if you sell at market you're going to sell at 6.80 right you see that you're going to sell at 6.80 but you're going at 6 at 7.50 on market so just for putting a market order you're going to lose about 70 dollars because that's that's what market is it's going to get you the first price in the listing price for them to sell you 750 because nobody wants to pay 750 so those contracts are there and the easiest way for them to sell you is going to be 6.80 because nobody wants to sell 6.80 so you're going to get a feel on that that's why nobody wants to get to get that so let's go back to apple i just wanted to show you a bigger spread and I want you to understand why you do limit or it's not market. So on the, in the case of Apple, you will notice too much difference because it's such a small spread. But if you're playing somewhere like Snow, like Snowflake, yes, you will see a difference. So remember, always do a limit order. We change here between the bid and the ask. Okay, so that's here. So zero one zero a. All right, so if you let's spin this here, so we can have it. So that's how you how you read an alert some people some traders they put a btc uh, actually no bto bto that means buy to open so basically when they say buy to all they're getting into a position and when they say stc that is sell to close that means close your position so if you ever see Somebody like Kindred and some other people that use that this term. That's what it means. So when you see BTO, it's back to open. So that means you're getting to a new position. When you see STC, that's sell to close. That means you're closing your position or some of them. Okay. So we review this here. Let's pin that to.
Okay, so that's basically how you read an alert and how you fill a contract. Now let's review in the money. ITM means in the money. So in the money contracts means that if the stock price is at 131, everything under 131 is going to be in the money, in the case of a call. If it's a put, everything above 131 is going to be in the money. So think about your thing is going up and it's at 131 and you get a contract below, like at 128. Some people ask, well, why are you buying a 128 if you think it's going to go to 137? Why are you, why are you just buying a 137 if you think it's going up? Well, look at how expensive the contract is. So the, the further in the money they are, the more expensive they are. And you will make more money too. We're going to go through that in a little bit. So ATM is at the money. So that means 131 will be it at the money for both calls or puts. The 131, since the stock price is 131, that's going to be your at the money. <clears throat> OTM, it's going to be out the money. That means if you're trying to buy calls and the stock price is 131, everything above 131, 132, 33, 34, only 195 in this case, that's going to be out of the money. In the case of puts, since they go the opposite way, you think it's going down, everything below 131 is going to be out of the money. So 119, 120, 121, those are all out of the money. Okay. So why are the contracts in the money more expensive than the ones out of the money? To get there, you need to understand what the breaks are. So let's start. I use three. I use delta, gamma, and theta. Okay. So delta. It's the amount that adds up to your contract for each dollar, the stock, not the contract, move towards your way. I don't say it moves up because it or down because if you are, have a 131 call and the contract move one dollar, so if you see here 131, so for example, delta amount that it's up to your contract per each dollar, the stock move towards your way. And that it's up to your contract where each daughter that start move towards. Okay, so what does that mean? For example, you have a 131 call on Apple and you bought at 192. Let's, so you bought when Apple is at 131.01 and you see here, Delta is 0.53. So if Apple gets to 132 point on one, your new price is going to be this plus 53, so it'd be
241. That's how much your contract is going to be worth. So you're going to make $53 or 52, actually. 52 for the first dollar that Apple goes up. If you have an Apple 131 call. If you have a put, uh, one let's say a 131 put at 131, when Apple was 131, and, and Apple goes to 130. In this case, a, a strike would be 130. So you're going to add $49 to your contract. OK. After that, I have something called gamma. So the gamma adds to the delta. So let's say. You're, you want an Apple call, 131 at point, uh, 1.92, OK? So we already talked that you got that when Apple was 131.01. When Apple is 131.02, your contract is going to be worth 2.41. And after that, your new delta is going to be 59, because this 0 0.08 adds to this 0.51. So if Apple moves another dollar to 1.33, you're going to have instead of 51, it's going to move to 59. Actually, you see it here. And that's why. Then you have the, so you have that. Delta is that and gamma is to delta. That you have theta. So theta is something that when you hold contracts overnight, that's the amount of value your contract is going to lose. So look on weekly contracts, contracts that expired this week, look how high is your delta, uh, your theta. And that's why I always say be careful with swinging these weekly contracts because no matter what, if you have that 131 call, you're going to wake up tomorrow with $26 less. Whatever happens, if if you're up or down or if it moves too much, that's going to be a, we don't know that, OK? But the only thing we know is that regardless of what happens, you're going to wake up with $26 less on your contract. Now look, if you go on February 19th, for example, look how low the theta is. So that's why say swinging a contract, yeah, your contracts are more expensive, but, that, but they lose less value too. So that's when you swing, you make sure you got time and that you have a low theta. So that every day that you pass with the contract open, you're not going to lose, nor, nor going to be losing any important value just for holding the contract. That's why I always tell you guys to. If you swing, the, I, I don't say don't swing it because sometimes people get lucky and you make money on that. But you need to know at least this. So let's right here. So then you have implied volatility. What's implied volatility? So if the stocks move with uh, the, the bigger the movement of, of the stock, not the options the stock, the higher the implied volatility is going to be. 37% is a low volatility. So everything below 40% is low which means that the story is consolidating. Like you see Apple today, Apple was moving between 129 and 131 all day. That's why the implied volatility is so slow. Now, if you go something like QS that move like 
17, it's more like 40% down yesterday and 20% today, something like that. You see, look how, they, look how high this is. Because the stock was moving, there's more movement, so the volatility is, is more volatile. It's moving more than Apple. So how do this plays on you? When you get into contracts, you don't want, you want ideally some, somewhere between, if you can get lower than 60%, it's good, but it all change. It all depends on how you do it. So volatility usually is like for 30 minutes. So if you're scalping, it's not that important, but you still need to look at it. Because if the volatility drops, let's say you got into QS, high volatility, and for some reason, the, the stock starts to consolidate, the implied volatility is going to start decreasing, and your contract value, it doesn't matter if it's a put or a call, it's going to decrease too, just for volatility. That's why sometimes people ask me like, well, the stock's moving my way, but I, I, I still, I'm still down. But I, there's usually two, two main mistakes with that. The first one, they buy way too far out of the money. So even if it moves your way, you're going to make four bucks per each dollar. So let's say you buy a weekly out of the money contract for Apple for uh, 140. So Apple only moved two dollars sideways today. It was all day between 129 and 131. So you're, you're not making anything if you buy this contract here. The one for you're making five bucks if you move a whole dollar. So I said that that's the first thing I look at it. The second one is the volatility. Did you buy when the volatility was high and now the, the stock is consolidating? So you're seeing the drop here and yes, it's moving your way, but the volatility is playing against you. So that's why you have to be careful when you're playing swinging something and you buy first thing at the morning, that's when things are more volatile. So if you buy when the stock is making a big movement and for some reason the stock is consolidating on you, you're going to see a decrease in your contract value just because the stock that you're buying is consolidating and you bought it in a pretty volatile time. You can also play with volatility on your favor Let's say you buy a stock when it's close to a level that you're watching. So it's being consolidated. So you get into a contract, into a position with low volatility, let's say 40%, and you're in the contract. And once it breaks that level, it starts moving and volatility is catching up. So that's going to help your contract increase its value. Okay, so now let's practice some sales so let's say okay we got apple at 1.92 and we want to sell at 2.41 what you do is you switch your order type you do sell you put the amount of contracts you want to do sell you can sell some of the ones that you have you can sell all of them <laughs> same you review you make sure you have the same contract here Limit order, and you put your, your your strike price. So you just confirm, send. You're gonna see this, and then you do this. You send. All right. Uh, you can also do stop. This is called stop stop loss. Make sure you're on STD here. Don't do us. Don't do Marcus. Do STD. And. So let's say, for example, you got in at 1.92. And you're like, you know what? I pay 192 on this contract and I don't want to lose more than $20 on this. So you put here, you put a stop at 1.72 and you just send it. Same confirm and send and then send. So that's a plain stop. And you can keep moving that, like you can always 
resend a new one let's say for example apple it's moving up and your contract is up well you can be okay now maybe let's put a stop at 182 and you send a new one and it's going to automatically at least and this one thing you're seeing it's going to cancel your order your old one and it's good and this one is going to be a valid one the new one let's say you're on profits here like that contract is now worth 241 as it was before Here you are like, you know what? I'm on good profits. I don't want this contract to turn to red, but I don't want to sell it now. I, I want to see my options here. So you can still do something like a trail stop limit. So from that 2.41, again, trail stop limit. So the market is 2.41 here. So from that 2.41, you say, well, I don't want to sell it for less than 2.31. So just do a minus 10 from that limit. So it's most likely going to sell if it goes all the way down to 2.31. You can also do percentage, right? So you just click here and you do percentage. So you say, okay, I'm on good profits here. I don't want to lose more than 10% of this profit. So just do here, minus 10% of 2.41. And then you confirm and sell. Trail stop is similar. From the mark, it's going to be a current price. You know, whatever the mark is, I, you do minus 10. But I, I suggest you to go on to a stop limit because that way you don't do a trail stop market order. Stop limit, same concept. So it's if, if it's a 2.46 and you want to sell a 2.31 here and you confirm and send. So these are the type of stops. Always sell at limit. First thing I do when I buy a contract, I set a stop. I use this stop here and I stop whatever I'm uh, I want to stop. <clears throat> then if I try to sell, I sell at limit between the bid and the ask. And sometimes I do play with the trail stop limit. Sometimes if I am like, well, you know, I have to walk away or I don't want to be staring at this contract all the time. I just put, okay, I'm at 246 right now. And the minimum that I want to say is 2.30. So I look at this here. And that's how I personally do it. You can do it percentage. You can keep changing this. Let's say now it is at 2.60. And you're like, okay, maybe. I just want to set it at 2.50 at least. So you go here. So 2.60 minus 0.10. So it's gonna sell you 250 most likely. Sometimes it's not enough, it's not accurate, especially if there's big press and if there's a big movement, you're you're gonna have the closest strike. So that's why people say, well, my stock was at 1.75, but I it sold at 1.68. You will say, yeah, probably you got a big drop. And it sold you for the closest price that you could find. It's not ideal, but at the same time, it's gonna stop you at the closest amount to your stop. And that happens sometimes. So don't be surprised if one time you say, Well, I had a stop at 1.75, and why is it selling me at 1.68? There was probably a big drop and your stop trigger, and it couldn't feel you right at that 1.675, but it it feels you're the closest and the closest uh, price that it could find. So I think that's all for today, guys, and all that I have here. Also, open interest is like how many contracts are being purchased uh, and volume. Volume is the how many orders are placed, it's open interest, and volume is how many contracts are being purchased. Also, let's go through this real quick. If you want to on think or swim, if you click here, laid out, and you click customize, you can add what you need here to your option chain. So this is how I have it set up. It's pretty simple for me. And you do okay. So that's how you add all this stuff to your Option change, you hit 
you click laid out, you click customize, and everything that is on the right side is what you have. Everything that is on your left side is what you could add. All right, you guys can start asking questions if you want. Uh, the butterfly, those are, we're going to go through those tomorrow with Ken. So it's basically you're doing a different order type and they're cost spreads. So Ken is going to do those tomorrow. So he's going to record those. So what we did today is, on, is only a naked call and a naked put. So it's the most basic order types. Yeah, gamma. So gamma is simple. T take it. I, I also I didn't understand gamma at first. It didn't make sense. But so we know that delta is the amount that your contract is going to gain per every dollar that the stock moves towards your way. So if you have a one thirty one call and you got it at one thirty one, you're gonna have fifty six dollars difference if it is 132. So now once you hit that price, you're going to have a new delta. So your new delta is going to be the gamma added to the old delta. So your new delta is going to be in this case 0.63. So that means that your AMA, if the story is at 132, your AMA is $56. Now if it goes to 133, you're going to make that $56 that you already made plus 62 or yeah 63 days 56.07 you understand that so you're seeing about the uh, about the gamma that it adds to the delta per per every every time you your contract move a strike so or the stock that's one dollar. Your new delta is going to be simply the old delta plus the gamma. That's it. It's simple. I am looking at this alert conference. It says that it's a put, but it also says. I am looking at this alert and I am confused. It says that this is a put, but it also says the price is a straight price. No, it is what we talk about in the money, how the money. So literally, if you look at a little of your message, ITM, ATM, OTM. So let's go that is GS. So it's a GS 2.6.6. Point... I don't understand your question. I am looking at this alert and I am confused. I, I think, I think he means, so he's buying a Goldman Sachs two sixty seven and a half put at two point three. I think Goldman Sachs at the time was above two seventy, and he's saying first price target is near two sixty nine forty to fifty. So let's say I think I think when he alerted this, Goldman Sachs was around two seventy ish. So yeah, you, that that alert is from today, so it's yeah. not going to be it, it moves around, so it's not going to be the same price that you but see right the, now. But also says price target is above the strike price. Doesn't a put mean that you're betting that the stock is going to go down? 
Yeah, but exactly. Yeah, exactly. He's buying the put when it hits that price target. Yeah, like, but it, it doesn't. He's selling his position there. Yeah, yeah. So it doesn't mean he's, he doesn't have to wait for the put to go to to sixty seven point five to take his money. Yeah. Like if if he got it at two seventy two seventy one and it's already at two sixty nine. Even though it's not on your strike price, you're still gonna make money. That's why that's you're gonna make whatever your delta is if it moves one dollar. So yes, you you don't have to wait all the way to. I mean, obviously, ideally you're gonna make more if it goes to to sixty seven point five, but that's that's not the case all the time. So he doesn't have to wait for his strike price to hit. He he can still make profits if the stock moves his way. Yeah, so it's it's just like that. Like you, let's say you buy a two seventy five call, and the stock price at two seventy. You don't have to sell when it's two seventy five. Like if it move, so it's a good example here. Let's say Goldman Sachs. Let's say we buy a two seventy five call, and the stock price is let's say two seventy one. It's two seventy point ninety three. So we can say two seventy one. So we buy at 271 and it's a 275 call and we pay, let's say, 225. So if the stock moves $1, it's going to be at 272 and we're going to take, we're going to be $35 up per contract. So we don't have to wait for the stock to go to the strike price. We, as long as we have a good delta, that's a key. As long as you, as you review your delta, you don't have to wait for the stock price to hit the strike. Obviously, if it's way too far in the money, if you get a 285 call, you're only gonna make twelve dollars per every dollar that it moves towards your way. So yeah, as soon as you have a good delta, you don't have to worry about hitting your your strike price. You're, you're gonna still make money. Yes, yes, you, you can do it as long as you have a good delta. That's why looking at your delta is important because you can tell your profits before hitting the strike price and you, it's, it's still going to work. Obviously, you want to hit your strike price, but that's a little a little harder sometimes. Yeah, whenever yeah, taking profits, it's, it's whenever you're comfortable. You don't have to wait until it hits the strike price or it gets closer and closer like it, it once you you know set your own profit goal you know either a percent or dollar amount take it you don't have to wait for the stock to get to that certain strike and by the way for the for the question before about gamma yeah we're gonna do butterflies debit credit spread tomorrow same time so for if you see here the delta why is the delta so high on an in-the-money call? Because the gamma gets added. So now that that's why that's why your your delta is higher because every strike it go it goes in, you're, you keep adding gamma, keep adding gamma. And that's why in-the-money contracts have such a high delta. On implied volatility, the higher the percentage, the more it has room to move over that. No, the higher the percentage, it only means that there is big movement with the stock. The stock is moving, like let's say Goldman Sachs jumped from 270 to 275. So it's moving, it doesn't mean that it has room to go up or down, it just means that it's been moving because I, I implied volatility catches up. 
is delayed. So if the stock is been moving, you're going to have a high IB. So the issue with that is that if you get a stock right when it's moving a lot, and for any reason you have an open contract and the stock is moving, it starts to consolidate, so it's not moving now, you're going to get hit. Your contract is going to lose value because of the decrease on IB. And it's the opposite. If you get a, a stock, uh, an option when it's consolidating and there's a breakout and it starts to move a lot and the IB goes up, your contract is going to gain value in IB. So it doesn't, it's not an opportunity, but it has room to move over time. It just simple means that the stock is been moving within, within a lot of range. So if you see here, uh, charts. So this ATR, this is a uh, volatility indicator. And the TTM squeeze is also a volatility indicator. So when the ATR it's pointing up, that means volatility is building. So you always want to get the ATR. This is the amount Adverse to range, so it's not really a range that is moving. So let's do, for example, Goldman Sachs, no, let's do like um, QS again. So you see here how it moves. So look when there's big move and look how the ATR move like that so that means it's not going to tell you if it's going up or down it's going to tell you that there's that you can expect big movement same with the ttm when they when the green when the dots are green that means the the volatility is building so if you have a low atr that means that uh, iv should be low on the option contrast so Same with volume. If, if there's big volume and this, the story is most, most likely going to move. So if, there, if, if the volume is above average, if the volume is above, is above average, um, it's most likely going to increase the volatility too. Uh, no, I, I only use this that I have here. Those are my indicators, and then I have this. So now I just pretty much trend to persistence, uh, volume. Like I don't, I don't, I don't tell you not to use them, but Mac, the RSI, and most of them, those are lagging indicators. So you're gonna see something, and it, it already happens. So just be careful. Yeah, it's okay to know if a story is overbought and oversold, but like Tesla is always overbought and it doesn't go down because of that. So, EMA is exponential moving average. Uh, this is not customized. This is only volume average. So if you guys look at the studies where you say studies here, hey, studies, this is what I have. So on volume, I have volume average. So moving average exponential here on the price and then lower ATR and TTM squeeze. So if you guys,
yeah, the, I, I need to take a screenshot, but I have a new computer and I'm a little confused on how to do screenshots. Windows key snipping tool. What's that? Hit your Windows key on your keyboard. Type in yeah. snipping tool. Snipping. Okay. And then uh, hit new, upper left corner of that program. Drag it across what you want to take a picture of, save it, and then upload it to the uh, Discord chat. Yeah, I changed to, I, I used to have Windows as a kid and I switched to Mac a few years ago and now I'm back to Windows. And okay, let me share that with you. So I think my main chart, this is how every morning I do my levels. And this is when I'm looking, it, it's different, okay? But yeah, so let me see you here. Uh, J-Rob, hide your account number. You guys want to go through support and resistance real quick? OK. So for me, that's this is the most important thing that I, the most useful tool. Once I learn, ah, candlesticks too, and look. It, it all combines is good. So first thing, this is how I have my my chart type on this type of candle. So hey King Ashi. And I got it here. Okay, so my style. Hey King Ashi. So I'm gonna show you how to draw with support and resistance on Think Restraint. Let's do something that let's do like face. So clear drawing set, so we can start fresh. So the first thing I do, what does TTM, I could make it faster. Okay, so TTM squeeze is a volatility indicator. So when you see the green dots, and Kian, Kian knows better about this, so correct me if I'm doing something wrong. So when you say the green dots, that means it's, it's volatility is building, and that is good to buy. So those are only the green dots. When you see the red dots, that means don't buy. Whether if it's up or down, don't, it's suggesting you to don't buy. Yeah, so, okay, you can look at that. And if, if, you, don't, if you have questions on what can send you, uh, let me know, okay? I can always answer them so, too, whenever you're done. Yeah, so support and resistance, how do we draw this line? So what I do is draw in tools, and I do this one here, price level, I think we're saying. So I start with, a, and you can do it on different time frames, but like for daily trading, I like to start on the 20 days and one hour. So you want to draw on the wicks of the candle now. So this is a candlestick. The wick is this little, or this little, no, like this line here. And this, this is the body and this is the wick. So you always draw on the wick. So for example here, 248.49, that's resistance. So how I have them set up, 
I don't have a left extension, I have a right extension. And this is personal preference. I don't need the name, and I can see the price here. And the color style that's up to you, you can change the width too, and that's my default. So let me see if I So some people like to have different colors for resistance and different color for support. That's that's gonna be up to you. So I save this as default and I hit OK. So I start going here. I see this high, so I draw one here. Uh, then I see a low. I can draw it here on 264, 63. Then I see another high. And this is especially when you see highs like this that they are the same, like this one and this one, this is like the most ideal thing. Like for example here, you see this little consolidation, so you can try a, draw a high one here. So at least you can potentially have a, an entry here, a little above this 272.39 for cost. And you see a little one here, you can draw it here and you see how it's close to these two here. And you have another support here. You have two weeks here. You can do this one here too. And you see here, resistance close here, almost here and here. That's a good one. And support here. Sometimes what happens is that the old resistance becomes new support. My criteria is just high, as I say, like you say the highest and the lowest of the candle wigs. So here you see another one here, 2374.99, you have it twice, high rejection, high rejection. So this is a good one here. And now if you're done here, you can always short a time frame or you can, because sometimes you're now going to see those levels as clear. So you can always go further here. And you see, for example, this one that we just draw at 280.50a, look here. It, it was, it's a high here and it's a high here. So it's a good one. And you can always, Look at that. Now you can short a time frame on a 10 days, 30 minutes. And you see what else you see here. I see another one here. And don't always read, like, for example, here you see, yes, you have it. But even though it, if it broke, it wasn't too clear. So sometimes you gotta be aware of that. Like, what time frames you have to do? We don't have time frames, we have three. So time frames again, I usually start that like you can do all the time frames, but since you're gonna trade this tomorrow, you don't wanna go way too far down. So I start with the 20 day, one hour, and then I move on the 10 day, 30 minutes. So I just move on. I was doing the 20 days, one hour first. And I'm doing the 10 days, 30 minutes. So that's pretty much how I draw them. So now I have this price reference here. And you guys see, for example, Facebook is between this 269.57 support. 
uh, here. Then there's more support at 267.34. And you can do it on a short time frame too, if you do a five minutes. Here, you can see more here, but sometimes the five minute is a little less reliable. Like, I like to do that 20 days in one hour because those levels are a little more solid. Like, you can rely more on the movement from 20 days in one hour than in the five days and five minutes. So that's how my chart looks after I do all the supports and resistance that I, that I like. You see, you can still do some here. And this one is actually not a bad one. And these are reference though. Sometimes they are more clear than other times. Like here, support, here, close enough. You can also draw one here as support. Uh, and you see here, for example, you draw it here. And this was another resistance, and now it became new support. Once we, so let me show you later. So if you draw it here, it broke its resistance before. Once it broke resistance, it broke support here, it broke it. It didn't work as resistance here, so it went, we have this climb here. It didn't work as support the first time, but then it did. So that's why you always want to wait for confirmation. Yeah, you can use those support and resistance to fill the gaps, correct? And again, it's not 100% accurate, but it's a reference that you have. So what you do is when you hit that price, you look for action. Like for example, let's say, if I see Facebook above 272.31 and I see big buying volume coming, I go like, okay, we are breaking resistance and there's a lot of buying pressure. So if we break, there's a huge potential that we can keep going up. Same with support. Let's say, okay, we broke 269.57, we're below that. And there's a lot of selling pressure coming. So you can see like if we if we confirm below this to 69.57, there could be a drop coming. And this could be a, a, a good entry for puts. All right, well, let me know if you guys have other questions. The bright green line just means that it's good to buy. Okay, so the volume, so first when it's green, it's good to buy. So the volume, for example, so you see it's, it's a volume average. So this line here, so 50 means for 50 days. That's good to me, that works for me. So basically what I look is that, let's actually go on a shorter time frame here. Let's say a 15 minute. So that means that every candlestick means 15 minutes pass. And every bar here means 15 minutes. So the line here is going to tell you the average. 
the same model here. So this is on thousands, and it changed depending on the store. Some of them are millions, some of them are thousands. So this line here is going to be the average. And you always want to be above the average, but you want to be sometimes twice. Like, you know, for example, let's, let's look at a better one. So let's give a, a better example. So you see here, so this is that opening. So the average of SQ the last 50 days at opening, it's 89,000. So you can say pretty close to 90,000. The average today for SQ was 616,000. So, and what is QD? It opened here. And it went up because all this volume and it moved more than it went up or down, it moved. You know, if you have high volume, it's, it's, it, it can change sometimes. Like, you know, just because you see a green bar doesn't mean that the buyers are always there. Uh, it can change, but at least you know it's going to move. So when it's green, that means that there's more buyers and sellers. And when it's red, that means that there is more sellers and buyers. And it changed over time. So when it's blue like that, that means that there's about the same amount of, of buyers and sellers. So you always want to be above the volume average if you want to get a position. Like here, for example, it's over, it's double. Even if it's a little bit over, doesn't mean it's good all the time. Um, I, I don't, I, I would at least use it on the five day, five minutes for scalps. One one minute, one day is just way too fast, and it's not. I mean, you can use it sometimes, but I think it's a little too fast. Like you always want to at least give it a five minute. Like another thing you can do, let's say you can start on the five minute. Uh, for example, here you see, okay, it's reversing the five minute. Now I want to wait until the fifteen minutes and see if the reversal comes. So it's Tuesday. That's yesterday uh, in the morning. So. All right, so the 15 minute is confirming now here, Tuesday. So volume average, basically, the, the line here, it tells you the average in the last 50 days. And you always want to be ideally at least twice above the average. And the green is going to tell you if there's more buyers, the red is going to tell you if there's more sellers. So what you can do, you can go in a long time frame, like let's say the not just so like the 20 days and one hour so you can see all the average for all these 20 days so let's say sq today open uh one million average of the one hour volume so you see here so you can look at other openings. So yesterday it opened at 1.4. Thursday opened at 0.9. So you can use that to make a reference. So we open at a with this line here. You see, okay, so today we can say we had a decent volume. We didn't have the best volume, but we had more than multiple days. For example, here, if you look at this one here. You say, okay, we open way below the volume, like way below the volume from the last 20 days. But yes, we were still above the average, but it was low volume compared to the other days. Here, for example, look how high the volume is. Green is more buyers, red is more sellers. All right, no problem. All right, I have about five more minutes if you guys want to ask more questions.
the green dots. So again, the okay, green dots, okay, that, that means that it's good to buy. What are you, if, so it means volatility is on. So when you see the green dots, you can buy. When you see, or you can get into a position. Doesn't mean up or down because depending on the order bars. So basically, if you see green, that means that it's giving you the okay to get into a position. If you see red, it tells you that the volatility is not built yet, so it's not giving you an okay to get into that position. Exactly. No, the, the light blue bars indicate the, the bullish momentum is increasing. The dark blue bars means that the bullish momentum is decreasing. Good stuff, Elkin. Good stuff. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow we're gonna do margins. You know how to do margins, and I'm gonna go over the the EMAs and TTM squeeze because it seems like you guys have some questions about them. And J Rob, uh, I sometimes use Bollinger bands uh, for exits. Yeah, same time. Yeah. Uh, same time. Yeah. Um. Entries and exits, more of a confirmation. I don't, I don't use it solely for entries. If I'm in a position, I would switch my chart um, to the Bollinger Band chart that I have and see um, if the candle on the daily is on the the highest band. And if it's in the highest band, that's when I will start to sell. Uh, but we'll, we'll, we can go, we can go over that uh, tomorrow. You know, so for margins. Um, Whoever wants to learn it, um, make sure to have margin account on because this is not gonna this is not gonna do you any good um, if you don't have a margin account. But yeah, so, but it's good to learn you, though. If you if you have less than twenty five yeah, yep. dollars mm -hmm. margin, you are going to only do three day tracing five days. Yep. So yep. the benefit you can do margin trades. The downside, you only have three days racing five days. Mm -hmm. So it's not bad, but you know, it's, it's, it depends. If yeah. you have less than yeah, yeah. five days. Mm -hmm. Please so come. It doesn't mean it's bad. Sometimes, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have to make 10 days, every, 10 trades every day. If you have to build your account, sometimes take it easy on us, but you have to also be aware of that. Yep. It's pros and cons. It depends on your strategy, what you like better. If you like to swing more than day trade, then you don't have an issue with this. If yeah. you like to day trade a lot like me, then yeah, it could be an issue. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll go everything over everything. Yep, yeah, I will go over EMAs, the eight twenty one and two hundred. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go over those again. All right, you're gonna yeah, I think, my stream. Uh, yeah, that should be it. Yeah, not 